Hey guys, Rush here with a video on five common mistakes that bronze and silver players make. This is going to be a video talking about what I think the biggest factors are that keep you back from climbing in solo queue. Some of these will be quite specific, some of these will be more about your strategy or your mindset. But either way, they're all things that you can work on that you should work on if you want to improve. So I hope you find these tips useful and without any further ado, let's get cracking. The first mistake that you'll be making is that you'll be playing stuff that you quite simply just can't play. A lot of times in these elos you'll be finding that a lot of players will be picking stuff that really is just a little bit too challenging for them to play. You know, the champions that are a little bit more difficult in their play style or their mechanics. Of course, these champions tend to be the ones that are perceived as more fun as well, which is why they get played. But if you want to climb, then you should really stick to some other things. For example, take a look at this right here. Here are the 10 most played junglers in bronze. Most of these are pretty easy peasy lemon squeezy, but there are, in my opinion, three right here that stick out as being champions that are kind of tricky to play. Lee Sin, obviously, is one of the more advanced mechanical champions, which makes him quite hard to play from that standpoint. Whereas Graves and Kha'Zix, not particularly hard mechanically speaking, but still difficult on the playstyle front. Now, if we were to order these champions by their win rates, you'll see that there are only three champions on this list who have lower than 50%. Surprise, surprise, it's the ones that are the hardest to play. In my opinion, guys, you should keep it as simple as possible. So nothing with crazy mechanics, lock that down straight away. Things that aren't particularly punishing to play either. So the less squishy you are, the more tanky you can be if you make mistakes. You're not going to die because you're tanky as hell. And also no pressure to perform in the early game. So these champions that are very one-dimensional, ones that need to snowball, and if they don't, they're useless. In my opinion, that's not the best route to go for. You kind of just want to choose something where it doesn't matter if you don't do stuff in the early, you'll still be useful later on. If you want more specifics on what actual champions you should be picking to match the criteria that I just listed, well, you are in luck because I've already done a top 10 easiest champions for winning solo queue video. So I'll link to that down below in the description. You can watch that. Hopefully it'll help you out. I just want to quickly clarify something here though first, guys, before we move on to the next point. Your champion pool should involve stuff that you enjoy playing still. Try and find a balance between what you enjoy and what's easy to play. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, you're not going to have the drive and the motivation that it takes to climb in solo queue. The second big mistake that silver and bronze players make, and to be honest, I think everyone makes this mistake in solo queue regardless of your rating but especially in lower elo. You can see that your team is bad, but you can't see that the enemy team is bad as well. Like we all know what it's like to be in solo queue and just witnessing everything crumble around you. Witnessing the terrible plays that your teammates make, the real head scratches where you're just like, mate, what the bloody hell are you thinking? All these awful plays going down and in your eyes, these are the things that potentially might be stopping you from winning games. I'm sure at some point while playing this game, you've commented on the fact that you had an amazing game and your teammates just threw it all away and you couldn't win. And I'm actually not here to tell you that that doesn't ever happen. Of course it happens, it's a team game. You're bound to have games where someone on your team mucks up and it loses you the game. Now, of course, it doesn't actually do you any help to focus on your teammates' mistakes because once you come out of that one game, you go into the next game, you ain't gonna see those players again, but you are gonna see yourself again so you're the only person you need to worry about. But more specifically to this point in this video, if you can see that your teammates are doing really dumb stuff, then you have to know that the enemy team is going to be doing really dumb stuff as well. Really what it all boils down to is perspective. At the end of the day, your teammates, your enemies as well, all come from the same player pool. They're all around the same elo, they're all the same ranking, that's why you're in the same game. So if your teammates and your enemies are all the same caliber of player, how comes it's only your teammates, really, that are making the big mistakes? Well, actually, it's not just your teammates making big mistakes. They're just the ones that you see making the mistakes. I can guarantee you that your enemies are making a butt ton of mistakes as well. To be honest, whoever makes more mistakes kinda comes down to who can punish mistakes better. And that's where you come in. You need to have that confidence that the enemy team is also making loads of mistakes. If you have that confidence, then you can capitalize on it. You can punish the enemy team for making mistakes. And that's how you win games at the end of the day, right? I mean, just think about that one game that your AD carry lost because she was completely out of position and then she got caught. 
Well, was it really a mistake until she got caught? That's what you have to do. You have to be the person catching the enemy players. You have to punish the mistakes. But most importantly, guys, just whatever you do, don't focus too much on the mistakes of your teammates. That's, aside being a Yorick main, expecting a new skin, just guaranteed disappointment right there. The third point we're mentioning today, the biggest mistakes of bronze and silvers, is that kills mean everything at this elo and that's not really a good thing i mean kills by themselves are you know they're cool uh, but they're more of a means to an end they're not really the ultimate goal kills give you gold they give you experience they take the enemy players off of the map for a short amount of time like kills give you the advantage and that's great and it's using that advantage to actually get stuff that wins you the game it's not the kills by itself. So whereas focusing on getting kills and you know trying to put the enemy behind, trying to put your lanes ahead, it's a good strategy for playing specifically in the early game. You can't just zone in on those things and have that be like the only thing that you care about in the game. Don't prioritize kills above everything else, especially later on into the game where objectives start playing a bigger part. The less you view kills as being like the ultimate end goal, the smarter you'll find yourself playing because then you'll really start thinking about the game more in the ways that it's meant to be played from a more macro standpoint. I'll use a really obvious example here, stuff that you see all the time in lower elo. Say you're playing mid lane and your enemy mid laner has roamed down bot and is fighting your teammates. Now because your enemy is down bot, you will then try and run down bot as well. Try and match the roam, try and fight with your team, see if you can get something going. In reality, what will happen is you'll be way too late, you won't influence anything and you'll just have wasted your time. But if you're not viewing the kills as the golden goal for League of Legends, and instead realizing that there are objectives in this game as well, then instead you'll realize that the best move for you to make if you're too late to roam down bot side, just push in your mid lane, get damage on the tower. Changing the way you view kills will improve your chances at getting more dragons, getting more towers, just a much better way to be playing the game overall. Our penultimate point for this video, guys, another massive mistake that bronze and silver players make is you only have one playstyle. You don't really adapt to the game. Now, this can manifest itself in multiple ways. Probably the biggest one, in my opinion, is that you don't really know how to play when you're behind. Because chances are playing from behind isn't really your jam. You're probably much more confident when you've actually got some kills and you're in a good spot. But this is why it's so hard for you to come back because you don't really adapt. You know, you still play as if you've got those kills. You don't play as if you're behind. You don't play like you need to get back into the game. You'll try and fight too much. You'll try and force too much. Instead, really, you should just be playing it chill, warding up and farming. Another way this problem rears its ugly head is that the laners won't be changing their playstyle in relation to the enemy laner. So if you're most confident playing a passive playstyle, then that's all well and good if you're in a matchup where you don't want to be playing aggressive and instead you just want to farm up. But then when you're put into a matchup where you actually do need to play aggressive, you need to punish the enemy player's weak early game, then you won't do it and then suddenly you're in a really bad spot. Likewise, if you're really aggressive laner and you're going into a matchup where you just need to chill out and you don't and then you're going to fall really far behind, again, that's, you know, Pretty bloody bad. It could also be something as simple as playing around spell cooldowns. If you're a low mobility AD carry playing versus Blitz and you're playing really passive standing behind your minions because you don't want to get grabbed, well when Blitzcrank then uses his grab and misses, you won't change your playstyle, you won't use that opportunity to harass him, to punish him, you'll still be playing passive because you're playing versus a Blitz. If you want to see the most amount of success in the most amount of games, you have to be flexible with your playstyle to match how the game is going. And before I move on to the last point, guys, I do just want to say, if you are enjoying the video, do hit me with that cheeky thumbs up, and you can subscribe to me if you really, really like it and you want to see more of me. But moving on to the last point now, guys, and this is something which really kills games, specifically a really good way to throw games in lower elo, and that is, quite simply, honestly, that knowing when to not fight is just as important as knowing when to fight. Playing aggressive in League of Legends and looking for opportunities to fight is in general a pretty good way to be playing the game. Like I mentioned before, if you're getting killed, you can get advantages and with those advantages, you can win the game. It also means that if you're playing proactive, you're forcing the enemy team to be playing reactive and then forcing them into situations that they might not be comfortable playing it. So that's all well and good, but you also need to know when going aggressive just is not 
a good idea. Way too many times in this elo we'll see people just fighting because they're like, hey look, there's someone, let's go fight them. To be fair, I'm actually quite guilty of doing this even in diamonds, so I don't feel too bad if you're someone who plays over aggressive. I'm also not talking about like the really obvious examples of when you shouldn't be fighting. I'm talking more about the subtle things that you might not be thinking about. Firstly, if you have your summoner spells up and your ultimates up, that will drastically change the course of the fight. And of course, if the enemy team has their summoners or ultimates up. You also need to be careful if the enemy team has a global up that can counter the play. So someone mid lane like Twisted Fate or Talia, someone like Shen in the top lane, or even just a teleport. You also need to be really careful if you're starting an objective like Dragon, for example, and the enemy team has a really good skirmishing or like AoE comp, you're probably just gonna get absolutely blasted. You also have to be really careful about overstaying and playing too aggressive that way. If you've just got something good and you're wounded, don't push your luck and overstay. Back off, play it smart. And also, of course, if your team is quite far behind, opportunities that present themselves that look like things that might be kind of good, probably aren't so good. If you're behind, just crack open a cold one, grab the boys and just chill out. But anyway, guys, that's all I want to say for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I tried to put some more thoughts into the points here, so I was tackling things that aren't really, really obvious. Hopefully, there's some things that you haven't necessarily thought about in the past. But in general, if you found it useful, that's good for me. Don't forget, you can subscribe to me for more League of Legends content. You can leave the video with a cheeky thumbs up. And you can find me on Twitter and streaming at twitch.tv slash foxtrot. All those links are down below in the description, boys and girls. But most importantly, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And I will see you in my next.